Let's welcome back to Midpoint, the Washington correspondent for Talk Radio News Service and the man who in an article years ago referred to George Lucas as an evil, evil man. <laughs> Something anybody who saw what he did to Star Wars 1, 2, and 3 would agree with. Justin Duckham, George. I strongly stand by that. <laughs> I guarantee you there are people who are really just going, yeah, Justin, good man, get in there. All right, let's talk about evil and perhaps somebody who wasn't evil but maybe is just doing nothing more than grandstanding. We'll get to the president now and his actions against Cuba. We have heard a lot of anger from people, including the former ambassador uh, from uh, to Venezuela, rather, who has grew up in Cuba, knows all about, knows Venezuela inside and out, who said that this was nothing more than grandstanding. It was a bad move, and we could have shoveled the Cuban government out by waiting a few more months. What's the overall consensus now coming in on the president's action? Uh, well, you know, of course, Democrats are supporting this. This is, um, you know, largely viewed as a return to sane policy when it comes to Cuba. And, uh, you know, frankly, um, you know, as much as uh, as nice as it would have been to have sort of waited it out, there was some serious concerns that the embargo was harming human rights in Cuba. Uh, you know, Human Rights Watch, as well as Amnesty International, have frequently pointed out that the embargo, as it stood, was essentially encouraging the Cuban government to be um, sort of more hardline when it came to punishing dissenters. And now they're frankly not going to have that excuse if they continue down the route that they're on. So well, I think let me ask you, this, though, yeah. Justin. Is it possible, though, that a lot of the Democrats are merely falling in line here because they want to be seen as being supportive of the president at a time when Democrats need to show a joined frontier after the midterms? Uh, you know, I, I think uh, that's probably not as big of a concern right now. I think if there was really an effort to try to show that there is unity in the Democratic Party, we wouldn't be seeing a lot of the situations we've been seeing right now. You know, we wouldn't have been seeing a huge schism between uh, House or between uh, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and the White House when it came to moving forward with um, the Cromnibus. We wouldn't have seen the sort of new emergence of uh, Elizabeth Warren and challenges for her to try to enter the ring. We wouldn't have seen. Um, you know, a lot of Democrats essentially mobilizing uh, to the left of the president. Uh, and I think if they were really trying to show any kind of party unity, they probably wouldn't be trying to achieve it right now. So let's look at this then when it comes down to the discussion of a new Tea Party and possibly a Tea Party for the left. Is that a possibility? I think it absolutely is. If you look at the situation right now, it essentially resembles what we saw in 2008 in the early days of the uh, you know, sort of GOP Tea Party. We saw in the closing days of 2008 uh, Republicans out of power in Congress uh, they um, more conservative ones did not have a name running that they felt uh, comfortable with in John McCain. There was a president that was essentially a lame duck, even though he was in their party. And that sense of powerlessness essentially um, sort of gave them a lot of momentum to start something new. And I uh, don't see any reason why that can't happen for Democrats since they are in essentially the same situation. They've lost control of Congress. They uh, a lot of them on the left do not support Obama any longer, and they don't necessarily see Hillary Clinton speaking to them. So. Uh, you know, I would not be surprised to see them mobilizing and trying to pull off what the Republicans were able to do. With regard then to the Republicans, 2015, Mitch McConnell says that the Keystone Pipeline is going to be the very first thing that he brings up to the members as soon as the Republicans and everybody takes office in January. About a minute left. What kind of a fight is this going to start? I think it's already, uh, I'm, you know, bound to happen at this point. We've already seen the Democrats sort of roll over uh, the last time that was brought up in a failed attempt to save Mary Landrieu's seat. Uh, I think Democrats have sort of lost the ability to fundraise on this issue once Harry Reid made that decision to move forward on it, uh, which is a shame for them since I believe, uh, you know, with uh, Tom Steyer and a lot of other people willing to open up their coffers in the name of climate change, uh, this probably would have been quite a lucrative issue. So is it then, could we say, a fait accompli then for the Democrats that they're going to lose this issue? Oh, I think absolutely, certainly at this point, considering, uh, you know, we have a White House who's not really willing to issue a veto threat on it. We have a Congress who's uh, more than willing to do it in both chambers. I think this is, uh, you know, just frankly bound to happen. Uh, it looks like it's uh, going to be a very long 2015 for the Democrats as well. Justin Duckham, want to thank you very much for taking a couple of minutes to join us. We wish you a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. We'll talk again soon. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a break and come back with some reality into the latest medical news about a blood test being able to detect and perhaps even prevent heart attacks. Let's face it, America is the kind of a country, whether you want to say it or not, we want everything easy, we want it simple, and we want to go ahead and be able to lose 150 pounds just like that and even take care of the heart attack. It just may actually not be that simple, but there might be something around the bend that's going to be sort of simple. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more when we come back. This is Midpoint, where every day we question everything.